Well, I guess so. Tony Northrup's at it again. Trying to kill off Michael th Four Thirds again. <laughs> I just don't know what his deal is with Micro Four Thirds. I mean, you know, like, I guess he doesn't like Micro Four Thirds and thinks it should just die. Like, bro, what's your problem with Micro Four Thirds? The first time I loaded up my backpack with all my Micro Four Thirds gear and put it on my back, I realized uh, very quickly the appeal of Micro Four Thirds and why everybody raised on and on and on about it. It was so much lighter than my normal kit that uh, it pretty much makes it the best travel photography kit that you can possibly get, I think. If you look at the comparison of <laughs> just the lenses alone, now I know the camera uh, itself, uh, the, the G9 specifically, is not much smaller than just the normal camera body at full frame size or APS-C size. But if you look at the differences in lenses, this is a 7200 new Canon one, which is considered small. And this is the 7, or 35 to 100 for the Panasonic. Same focal length. Huge difference in size and weight. For that reason, I think the Micro Four Thirds is going to be around for a long time to come. Because for the average person, the sacrifice in quality versus the weight is a good trade-off. What he don't seem to understand is, is that most people in the world aren't professional photographers. We're not going out into the, we're not making money off our photography. We're just wanting to document the times that we have with our family and our friends, what we're doing at the time. And to have a lighter kit makes more sense to the average person. Maybe not to a professional photographer who might sell his pictures, his or her pictures, or videos or whatever. Of course you're going to want a full frame. That's pretty obvious. But just for the average person, it's so much more practical to take a Micro Four Thirds kit than it is a full frame kit. And I own both, but if I'm going on vacation or going, in, you know, on a trip of any kind, I want to take the Micro Four Thirds each every time because it's just more practical to take with me. There's no way that I could take my Canon kit on vacation and pack it around, like go around. Let's say I go to Washington D.C. There is no way I'm going to Washington D.C or New York or any, any big town on vacation and I'm gonna take my Canon kit with me. They're just not, it's just not practical. I mean, I'd be, I, you'd be dead tired in the first few hours. When you're gonna be walking a lot uh, while you're on vacation, <laughs> it just makes more sense to use a Micro Four Thirds camera. He said, one of the things he pointed out in his videos was that Panasonic and Olympics, they haven't been investing and new technology to progress micro four thirds. But I have a question for him. Have they really had to? I mean, the specs of these cameras are unbelievable. It's just now that APS-C cameras and full frame cameras are just starting to catch up with micro four thirds and their video capabilities. The photo capabilities from what I've seen have been great. The video capabilities are pretty much unmatched and, and just until recently, maybe with the uh, Fuji X-T4, just now starting to catch up with the G9. And as far as I know, they haven't even, they have nobody has touched the uh, G, GH5 yet. Another one of the things that Tony mentions in his videos is how great, you know, Sony's doing and Canon, Canon's doing. Um, he tends to really, be high on Sony, and I am too. I mean, Sony is great. They have offer a lot of great features, but as far as like a small compact camera, uh, you have they have their APS-C line. And one of the things you mentioned about Micro Four Thirds is they're not innovating enough. But when you look at that A6600, there's been no innovation there really uh, to speak of. So I don't know what his thought process is there. Uh, they introduced the A6600. They they came out the A6600's big selling points were the bigger battery, and it had obvious. The bigger battery should that shouldn't be an innovation. That should have just been in it in the first place. 
And then the IBIS for the A6600, uh, that's one of the reasons that I wanted to buy the camera. Uh, I was going to buy the A6600 uh, because I had IBIS, because the A60, I had the A6400, it doesn't have IBIS. So when the A6600 announced that uh, there was going to be IBIS in it, I was uh, pretty, it piqued my interest and I was pretty interested in the camera. But then I started seeing test videos um, shot on the A6600 with the IBIS and it was pretty much terrible. <laughs> so for him to sit there and say that, hey Lumix or Panasonic is not innovating with their cameras and that Sony and all these other companies are, that's simply not true because the A6600 really hasn't even caught up with the G9 yet. So why would, what's pushing Panasonic to innovate? I mean, they have Abyss, the Abyss is great, the lenses are lighter and cheaper. They have more uh, video specs. And the autofocus is much better than it used to be. And then when you look at the uh, lens lineup for the APS-C, specifically Sony, uh, it's pretty much uh, terrible as far as I'm concerned, as far as uh, zoom lenses. I like to shoot a lot of zoom, zoom lenses. I mean, as far as, I mean, you have the new lens from them, it's the 55 to whatever, the G lens that they introduced sometime last year. And that sucker's $1,200. $1,200 for APS-C lens. And that's a lot of dough to be dropping on an APS-C you know, uh, camera. I mean, if you're a full-time Sony APS-C guy, um, that's a great lens, a great lens to have. But just for the average guy, $1,200 for a lens on an APS-C body, that's a little bit too much to, for the average guy to, to take. As far as the innovation goes for Sony, specifically for Sony APS-C, I don't see it. The cameras really haven't gotten better, and the lenses haven't gotten better either. As far as APS-C goes for Canon, the lens selections for the Canon APS-C or M-mount are <laughs> they're worse than the uh, the Sony's. So. I wouldn't advise that either. I mean, the Micro Four Thirds selection of lenses is, is vast, vastly greater than the APS-C line for Sony or Canon or the M mount for the Canon. I'm just trying to figure out what he means by innovation. Let's put it this way. If Panasonic came out, oh, let's say at the end of this month, and, said, and with that camera they developed the best autofocus changed nothing else about the camera but put Sony's autofocus in the in the Panasonic camera you wouldn't be able to keep them on the shelves there wouldn't be enough of them to last everybody would be buying one that's how good just the general specs of the Lumix the Panasonic cameras are right now if they had Sony's autofocus or Canon's autofocus, there would be there would be no contest. Uh, everybody would be at it, and everybody would be on the line talking about how great it is. So just because he doesn't like it doesn't mean it's going anywhere. Also, with the Lumix cameras, they keep updating and updating and updating, and they really have no need to come out with a new camera because. Every update they bring brings some brings substantial changes to the camera. It's not like a little micro update where they might add a little thing here or a little thing there or just try to fix something. The updates that Panasonic provides have been pretty much game changers as far as I'm concerned. So if you haven't tried a Lumix camera in a while, don't worry about what Tony says. You should go ahead and try one. I mean, you can buy one, try it out for a few days, send it back if you don't, if you just absolutely hate it. I've done that, I think, once or twice with the G9 so far. But each each and every time I send it back, 
uh, just something stuck with my mom that I should probably, that I wanted to keep it, you know, kind of like I missed it. And for somebody to come online and just say, hey, Micro Four Thirds is going to die when it has so many great things going for it, it's just crazy to me. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Don't worry, Micro Four Thirds is not going anywhere. Thanks for watching.